Okay, good morning, everyone. Can listen me? Okay, can I? Uh? Okay, so then we go to new topics. There's a uh, chapter five, electronic. Okay, so I will share the uh, screen now. Okay, this one is a uh, chapter five. Okay, 5.1. There's an uh, electrons. So we go to introduce about the electron first. Okay, we see what is that, lah. Uh? Okay, now we go through to the next part. Okay, before we go to electron, we need to see about the thermionic emission. Okay, thermionic emission is one of the process that can produce an electron. Okay, let's see the definition. Actually, you can refer your textbook. Your textbook also very clear about this one, the explanations. Huh? Okay, thermionic emission, first one, we know the definitions. Okay, there is a process of emission of electron. Okay, they produce an electron from the heated matter, uh, metal surface. That means the metal surface you must heat. Okay, if not the electron, they cannot escape from the surface. So this one process where they just uh, heated the metal, after that the electron they produce, so we call it as a thermionic emissions. Okay, so from here you can see the diagram here lah. A metal piece inside got electron. Okay, if you provide the heat, I mean the electron, they got enough energy. After that, they can lift from the surface. So this one we call it as a thermionic emissions. Okay, then we go to number two. Okay, thermionic emission. There's a large of the number electron. They are free to move inside a metal. A room temperature. At the room temperature, the electron, they cannot escape okay, at the surface. Why? Because they are held back by the attractive forces between the atomic nucleus. So that means the atom, atom, uh, particle between, they got one of the forces. There's a, a attractive force to pull by each other. Okay, they got one of the link. Lah. After that, when it just uh, provide the heat, so that means the link between the Forces of the molecule and molecule, after that they can break, after that they can lift from the surface. So this one, just want to introduce about the electron, how come can come up from the metal surface. When the metal, you just hit it, some of the electron have gained the enough kinetic energy. So that means temperature normally related with the kinetic energy. Lah. When it just hit it, so that means they got kinetic energy, they got thermal energy. You can say heat energy. After that, they can escape from its surface. Okay, just like this diagram, the hot filament, the filament, you just heat it. So that means the electron, they can escape from the surface of the filament. Okay, cathode ray. Okay, second one I want to introduce is a cathode ray. Okay, cathode ray, you can see the diagram. This one, green color. Okay, when it just come out from the filament, then it goes straight line. After that, they go to deflected. This one, we call it as a cathode ray. So cathode ray, there's a create by the all electron. All the electron, they join together and move. So they produce a cathode ray. So we give it the definition is, there is a beam of the electron. They're moving at the high speed in the vacuum. Okay, that means the whole tube now is a vacuum, huh? So there's an electron that join together become one of the light ray, okay? The light ray, they were moving in the high speed after that in this one vacuum tube. So from here, I just introduced about the thermionic emissions. Okay, number two is about the cathode ray. So that means when just got thermionic emission, then we got cathode ray. If no thermionic emission, actually, we cannot say they got the, uh, the cathode ray. Okay, you must create until the electron to produce. 
Then after that, when it just come out together, then they produce one of the light. Okay, just like the light beam. After that, they're moving in high speed in the vacuum. Okay, then we're going to see some of the uh, video, but this one video in Malay. Lah. So later I explain for you. Okay, you can see this one is a surface. The electron just moving on the surface. Okay, because they're not enough kinetic energy. So when you just hit it, uh, they go to heat. So you can find the electron. They got enough energy. That means they can escape from the surface of the matter. Okay, so this one's an example diagram. A video clip to show you. So this one we call it as a thermionic emissions. Okay, thermionic emission and this one process. Okay, so we continue to the another part. Okay, now we go through the whole tube. Eh? This one whole tube that we produce the thermionic emission, we separate by three parts. We go to part one. Part one is just now I told you. Okay, we heat by using power supply. We're never using the Bunsen burner. Huh? This one is an electronic, so everything using the electric. So we're using 6 volt power supply. Okay, join with the, uh, the starting part for the filament. So this part we will happen is a thermionic emissions. So that means the tungsten filament, they will produce an electron. Okay, then the electron will go to the cathode. Okay, the electron will starting at the cathode. So that means you need to heat. Lah. Now the heat is provided by the 6 volt. Okay, but the heat now, they only can move on the surface. Only can move on the cathode surface. So from here, you want the electron to go to accelerate until to the anode. That means the 6 volt is not enough. There's not enough energy for the electron to continue to accelerate. So from here, you can see the second part. Second part, when it just go accelerate, they will go. The electron will be faster. Okay, when they go to the accelerate, this one plate we call it accelerate. So we can call it that's an anode lah. This one is a cathode. So cathode want to go anode. This situation, the middle center part, you can find it that it's moving very fast. So this one we call it as an electron beam. There's a cathode ray. Okay. So the reason now how to make the cathode ray you produce. So you can see at the bottom, number three, cathode ray. There is a, they join another circuit. They join another circuit. This one circuit we call EHT. EHT stands for extra high tension. Extra high tension means now the voltage is higher than the 6 volt. Normally using kilo, using kilo to calculate. Uh, 3 kilowatt, 4 kilowatt like this. So that means if you join with the another power supply, there's an extra high tension for the cathode and also the anode. Okay, now the electron, they got enough energy. So they can accelerate from the cathode, go to the anode. Okay, so this one is a starting part. This one we call electron gun. Okay, electron gun. Okay, when we use the electron gun, uh, they're using for your uh, uh, computer or your laptop. They got light to produce, is it? So this one is normally they're using for TV. TV also got because they want to produce the electron. After that, they produce a light ray. So this one is one of the electron gun inside. They will put inside your TV. Okay, but the last time the TV is very big size, is it? So this one should be bigger size inside there. But now the TV all using the very thin one. Okay, the very thin one using the LED. So that's why this one, they already uh, make it become small size or they modify using another things. So this one is a one of the process. They want to produce the light. Okay, from the electron moving, then produce the light. Okay, next is a OC, a oscilloscope. Have you seen the oscilloscope before for your heartbeat? Okay, when you join, you want to check about the ECG. Okay, you join with the uh, the thing you, you stick for your body. After that, you can see the ECG, the graph, is it? The one we call a uh, cathode ray oscilloscope. So they're also using electron gun to produce the light. Let the electron to move. After that, the heat to the screen. After that, you can see the, the wave the wave pattern for your uh, ECG di diagram. 
Okay, this one is a one of the function by using thermionic emission. After that, using the electron. Okay, okay. Remember the part name, ah. Okay, we got first part is a filament heating, produce the thermionic emission. Okay, part two, uh, part two, you're talking about the anode, the electron they will accelerate go to the anode. Why? Because they got extra high tension. Then they produce a cathode ray. Okay, then we go to next part. Okay, next part, then we go to see the explanations. Huh? There are many free electrons in the metal wire. For example, tungsten filament. Okay, when the 6 volt power supply is switched on, so the temperature of the tungsten filament will rise. Then the free electron will gain sufficient kinetic energy to leave the metal surface. Only leave metal surface. So thermionic emission is emission of the free electron from the heated metal surface. So you can see the diagram. Lah. So first diagram, that means the hot tungsten filament. Then we just heat it. You see the electron only at the surface. So if you want the electron to move it, you see the second diagram, electron want to move it. So you need to join another power supply. So this one power supply, the voltage must be high enough. So we call it is a extra high tension. Okay, step two. Okay, step two, there's a in the glass vacuum. Okay, this one is a whole vacuum. Eh? This one tube, the whole tube is a vacuum. The glass vacuum tube, the electron are able to accelerate towards to the anode. Okay, from one, go to two. Without collide with the A molecule. So that's why, why they need vacuum. Because vacuum, no A molecule, if the electron just move, they will go straight. They never hit anything. Okay, if you hit anything, maybe you repel with it. So from here, they must create, the tube must be vacuum. Okay, prevent the collision between the electron and also A molecule. Okay, there is a no energy loss and electron move with the maximum velocity. Okay, so that's why they don't have any energy loss. So electron can be moved in maximum velocity. Okay, so this one is a reason why the whole situation is a vacuum. Okay, only let the electron to move. After that, they can move in very high velocity. Okay, part number three. Okay, part number three is when the vacuum tube is connected to the EHT, extra high tension power supply, the electron will emitted from the cathode will be attracted to the anode with the high velocity from an electron beam. So this one, electron beam is a high velocity. We call it as a cathode ray. Okay? So the electron beam will be complete. The EHT power supply circuit and the milliemeter, if you join another emitter reading, they will show that current is flowing. So everybody know electrons start to move, sure the current will be uh, produced. So if you join with the emitter, so that the emitter will be deflected. When the electrons start from the cathode, go to the anode. Okay, if the electron only on the filament, they're never moving, actually you don't have any electron movement. Okay, you must create until the electrons start to move, then we got the current. So if the connection of the EHT power supply is reversed, the milliemeter will not show any readings. Okay, if you tabale, so electron how to move, electron cannot move to anode. Tabale already, so that means now your direction is opposite. So they cannot moving the electron, so the emitter cannot show the reading. So that means when you join the EHT, you must make sure the connection go to the cathode and anode must be collected. Okay, must be correct. Okay, how about the 6 volt? This one is a filament, is it? Just now I show you the filament. If the filament, the connection is the ballet, is it okay or not? Actually, it's no problem because you just want to heat. Okay, you want to heat, you want to reverse the terminal, also no problem. But EHT, remember the connection must be correct. Okay, must run the electron join with electron on negative terminal. Then the anode will join with the positive terminal. Then the electron can be moved from the cathode go to the anode. Okay, so this one is one of the info, Gary, from your textbook. Eh? Okay, if the layer of the metal oxide, 
okay, like barium oxide or strontium oxide is coat on the metal surface. Just now we're using tungsten, is it? So they say if they're using the uh, barium and also strontium, it's coat on the metal surface. So they find it the cathode in the vacuum tube. Okay, the temperature required to release the electron will be reduced. Okay, so that means you need to heat the metal. So this one, you don't need using more heat like, because they're faster to be heat up. If you've got coat above the barium oxide and also the strontium oxide, they can help the temperature faster to be increased. Okay, so they say the temperature required to release the electron will be reduced. Okay, they no need using more of the electron. They get uh, no need to more using of the heat. They can help the uh, filament faster to be heat up. Okay, number two, the info they say about the graph. The graph below, they show about the graph current against the voltage, okay, for the thermionic diode. So this one, they show about thermionic diode is non-ohmic component. Remember the ohmic conductor? Ohmic conductor must follow the Ohm's law. They will directly proportional, but you see this one is a curve. So when it just curve, we can say thermionic diode, there's a not obey Ohm's law. So this one is not uh, ohmic conductor. Okay, remember the ohmic conductor and non-ohmic conductor. Okay, this is a one of the example. Okay, they want to show you uh, what's the situation if I join with the power supply, if I join with the EHT. Okay, then they join with the milliammeter. So from here, the first one, what is the vacuum tube? Okay, this one is a vacuum tube. So we go to answer vacuum tube. Actually, they consist what you mentioned inside. They consist what element? So first one tungsten filament. After that, they got cathode. They got anode. Then the filament is connected to the six volt power supply. So that's all. This one we call it as a vacuum tube. Okay. When starting part, they want to produce the thermionic emission. So they must inside the vacuum tube. So you must explain inside the vacuum tube what uh, what is consist. So we got tungsten filament, we got cathode, we got anode. After that, you must have the six volt power supply. If not, cannot functions. Okay, state the current terminal connection for the anode and also the cathode. So anode must join with positive lah. Cathode must join with the negative. So we just mentioned. Okay, cathode is connected to the negative terminal, and the anode they will join with the a uh, positive terminal. Okay, of the high voltage DC power supply. So we're using DC power supply. Eh? We're never using alternating current. Now, alternating current later, you can see the electron can out, cannot come back, can out, cannot come back like this. So we want to make sure the electron is continuous to move it. So we're using direct current. Okay, now you can see the extra high ten. Uh, no, not yet. Just the six volt. Eh? Now the six volt power supply start. Okay, they start. You see the filament heat up. So from here, what happened to the milliammeter pointer? If you click the six volt power supply S one, so S one you just on. You see what happened for the milliammeter. So actually, there's a no readings. Okay, no readings. Remember, just now I just told you the electron only on the surface. That not yet create cathode ray. That means the electron still not yet moving. So that means milliammeter cannot show any readings. Okay, what does this indicate? This one indicate means no current flow through the circuit. That means no current flow through the whole circuit. Okay, so we continue to the next part. Okay, now I'm going to start. Okay, click S1 and S2. Number S1 and also S2, you go to start. So the EHT switch, uh, you on the EHT switch, what happened to the milliammeter readings? So you can see the milliammeter reading. They got deflected. Okay? They got deflected. So we just say the pointer now, they start to deflect it. Okay, what's the meaning? When it just got deflected, the meaning is the current already start to flow from the circuit. Okay, explain the answer in question six why the current can be flow. So we must talking about the electron. Now the electron, they can moving from the cathode to anode and produce the uh, cathode ray. Okay, so we can see the answer. 
Okay, they just mentioned when the S1 is closed, current flow and heat up the filament. Electrons are emitted. Okay, high potential difference between the cathode and anode causes the electron to accelerate. So the keyword when cathode go anode, you must put accelerate. Okay, accelerate move very fast. Okay, when the electron reach to the anode, the circuit is complete than the current. Okay, so that means you need to explain step by step. From the starting power supply, they produce the heat for what? For the filament to heat up. Then the electron only on the surface. Then you join with the high potential, different for the e EHT. So after that, now the electron, they gain the enough kinetic energy and move from the cathode to anode. So we're just talking there's an accelerate. Okay, when they reach to the anode, that means the whole circuit already is complete. So the current start to flow. So that's why the milliemeter can show the deflected readings. Okay, so this one is how they go to run. Okay, how they go to run uh, about the electron gun. Okay, so from here we go to explain for every structure actually what's the functions. Okay, first one sure is the uh, anode. So the anode is an accelerate electron from cathode. This one is a function for the anode. They want to accelerate. That means they're going to attract the electron come to the anode with fast, okay, high velocity. Okay, after that, number two is a related with the tube. Lah. This one, you call it pendaflow screen. Okay, this one is a one of the screen. There is a pendaflow screen. Pendaflow screen, they want to show the light. Okay, they want to show the light. So they convert the kinetic energy of electron to light energy. So that means later the electron they move from the cathode to anode. After anode, they will heat to the pendaflow screen. So this one pendaflow screen, they will produce the light. So that means just like the cathode ray oscilloscope, uh, you go to check your ECG, you can see the light wave, is it? So that one is a pendaflow screen. That's why, because of this electron to heat, so that's why they can produce the display, the light ray, let you to see what's the shape. So that one is a pendaflow screen. Okay, remember pendaflow screen, what energy convert? Kinetic to light energy. Okay, then we see the extra high tension. Okay, extra high tension. Produce high potential difference between the cathode and also the anode. To accelerate the electron to anode. So this one is an EHT functions. Okay, they want the electron start to move. Okay, next we're going to see the tungsten filament. Tungsten filament just starting part, they just emit electron after being hit. Electron on the surface only. Okay, then you see the six volt power supply. Six volt power supply just heat up the filament. Okay, so every part, they got different functions. Okay, make sure you understand the function for the this all laboring. Lah. Okay, then we go and see the, this one example. See, this one is uh, the electron, the electron beam, the cathode ray. When it just hit to, uh, this one is a fluorescent screen. So when it just hit the screen, they produce the light ray. Okay, then the light ray, they will join with the CRO. This one is cathode ray oscilloscope. After that, you can see the display. Okay, this one display actually the same like this one screen. Okay, the same like the fluorescent screen. Okay, so this one is a what's the function? Uh, inside the whole machine, uh, this one is the CRO. Behind, they got a little bit thicker. Is it actually there's a whole tube? The whole tube inside this one machines. So what you need to do, you just adjust the button. You just adjust the button. But when you just adjust the button, actually you go to adjust the uh, displayment. You can see this one got a uh, horizontal plate, then they got vertical plate. So this one horizontal plate and vertical plate, when you just adjust it closer, they can further, after that they can make the charge become stronger, uh, like this. Suppose you cannot see anything, you just adjust the button, then you see the display only. So suppose inside got many things they need to do, the electronic to do so many work, when you just go to adjust. Okay, now you see one of the short video also in Malay. So you just see the diagram. This one we call electron gun. Okay, this one we call depletion layer. So the layer that can deflect it. 
So you can see this one is up and down. So this one is control the deflection is go up and also go down. Okay, this one support is a horizontal left and right. So they control the electron, the cathode ray later, they deflected to the left and deflected to the right. And the last one, this part is a fluorescent screen. So that means when the electron just hit to the screen, they produce a green light. So there's an electrical energy, uh, sorry, it's kinetic energy convert to the light energy. Okay, now you can see the short video. Okay, fluorescent screen. Eh? So we focus here. Okay, this one is a filament. They go to heat. Okay, after they produce the electron fast moving, go to the anode, focus to the anode. Okay, so you can see this one is a focus. Focus means they make sure they go through straight line. Then this one anode is an accelerate. Okay, we got two anode. Lah. One is a focus, one accelerate. So when they go to the depletion plate, this one is a Y. Okay, Y can make they produce vertical, vertical line because they can hit Y1, they can hit Y2. Okay, if X1 and X2, there's an X plate. So if we hit X1, X2, they will produce a horizontal line. So that's why you can see the displacement from the CRO. They go up and also they go left and right. So this one is how the uh, electron gun. This one we call it the electron gun, how to function. Okay, oscilloscope is a one of the big uh, the machine, is it? But inside, they got this one, electron gun. Okay, so we continue to next part. Okay, now we go to separate part by part. Lah. Just now you can see deflection tube. You can see the deflector up and down, is it? They want got Y plate and also X plate. Ah, so this one is a deflection tube. Okay, they got this different part. Lah. One is a, a, a diagram. You can see the diagram up and also down. Another one is a left and also right. So from here, we want to introduce is a deflection tube first. How to make it to deflect it. So you can see the diagram they can show about the, just like the graph chart. Okay, the graph chart, they label the number. So later you can see the ray. They deflected how big the anchor. Okay, so this one is a diagram. Diagram for the electron gun. When the joint becomes the deflection tube. Okay, inside the tube. Okay, now you see what's the function for this one deflection tube. They want to deflect the electron beam to produce by the electron gun. Okay, they want to deflect the electron. Okay, they want to make sure this one electron want to go up or come down. Okay, depends your elect depends your energy to produce lah. Okay, depends your charge. Then the electron will be deflected. Okay, now you can see the properties of the cathode ray in the electric field by using the deflected. Diffracting of the cathode ray tube. Now we want to check, is it the electron is a positive? Electron is a negative. Okay, we're using the uh, deflected uh, tube. Now we're going to see here, uh, first one, this one is a six volt. Then we're using the EHT, so the electron can be moved. Lah. Okay, when it just come off from this one, this one is a one of the deflections. So up and also down. So this one is a Y plate. Okay, there's a Y plate. So the electron later, they will deflect it. You can see this one got another EHT. This one is a switch number three. Switch number three is produce the charge to the plate. Okay, you can see the positive, they go to upper part the plate. And negative go to the lower part plate. So that means later the electron to come out, they will deflect it. Okay, so we want to check electron got charge or no charge. Okay, because sometimes when it just come out the cathode ray, we do know there's a what. We just prove it by this experiment. Okay, when it just prove it, they move to the positive plate, then we just understand, oh, this one ray to come out is a negative charge. So that's why they go deflected to the positive. So that's why we call cathode ray actually is a negative. That's an electron. Okay, they're using this one situation, they go to prove. Okay, now we go and see, eh? The first one, we connected the deflecting cathode ray to the 6 volt. Then after that, connecting the anode and also cathode to the EHT power supply. Okay, you can see here, yeah? power supply, we got three switch. S1, S2, and S3. Okay, so from here, S1, S2 are turned on. 
it only S1, S2 you turn on. No water connected to the deflecting plate. Deflecting plate now is nothing because your S3 is still open. So from here, what you can see, okay, you can see the ray go straight. Okay, nothing happened. Okay, the cathode ray just goes straight. So go straight, what's the meaning? No deflection, observation, explanation means the cathode ray is travel in straight line. Because inside don't have any A molecule to disturb. So we find it, the cathode ray just go straight line. So this one is the first properties of the cathode ray. Okay, characteristic for the cathode ray, straight line. They only move straight line. Okay, then we go to test number two. S1, S2, S3 close or closer. So you can see for the upper part, the plate should be positive. Lower part, the plate is a negative. Okay, now we're going to see what happened. Okay, so you can see deflected. Okay, they will deflected up. They will deflected near to the positive. Okay, the anchor, how big? Depends your current, how big? Okay, depends your potential difference. If we just adjust the extra high tension, become very high voltage, so that means the anchor deflected with the big anchor. So if I reverse, I reverse, uh, I reverse the connections. So you can see, they will deflected go downwards. Okay, they keep one to find positive plate. Okay, like this actually was the meaning. So we see the observation. The path of deflected upwards for the first round. Second round, they deflected downwards. Okay, so the explanation is cathode ray can be deflected by the electric field. They are deflected towards positive plate in a parabolic path. Okay, cathode ray are negative charge. So from here we can prove there's a cathode ray is a negative charge. So we got two second characteristic already. First one, straight line. If you don't have any charge, they will move straight line. Number two, there is a negative charge because they will deflect it, go positive plate. Okay? So then we continue to the next part. You see the diagram, uh, the video. Okay? When don't have any plate, I don't have any charge. Actually, they go straight. Okay, they go straight. Okay. So a little bit moving means they disturb lah. Maybe got disturb surrounding. They got magnet or any uh, a molecule. Okay, when it just join, you can see up is a negative, down is a positive red color. Ah. Okay, you can see. You adjust the voltage higher, they will deflect it more. Go to downwards. Okay, they will go to positive plate. Okay, now we go to reverse. We go to reverse. Okay, reverse the connections. So positive, I go up. Okay, I join to up. Then the negative, I go down. Okay, so you see the connection again. Okay, now you see the cathode ray. Uh, when you just adjust more water, they will deflect it more. Lah. Now they will deflect it, go upwards. So that means they keep to find positive plate okay so this one we prove there's a elect uh, there's a negative charge for the cathode ray okay so this one is uh, another thing to prove okay so that means we just finish for the deflection the deflection tube now we need to see is a multi cross tube okay different tube you can different function uh. so that means this one tube you can take out Okay, you can take how you can put just now the deflection tube to go in. So now this one is another tube. They call multi cross tube. That means center. They got one of the plate to block the light. This one, this one plate we call it as a multi cross. The shape just like the multi cross. Okay, so from here you can see. You want to check about the properties of the electron. Okay, using the multi cross. So this one's a multi cross. So the rest setting is the same. Just we change the, just now the plate chain become the multi-cross. The multi-cross is put at the center. Okay, at the center. So we're going to see the starting. So starting, I only on the 6 volt. 6 volt heater supply is connected. So I switch on. Okay, then I join EHT also. Okay, 
Uh, sorry, not yet EHT. EHT still off. Still off. Uh, only 6 volt. So that means they hit the filament only. Lah. Okay, when it just hit the filament, so what you can see, you see one shadow. Sure got shadow, lah, is it? Because you're on the you're on the 6 volt, that means the filament just on, they just like the bulb. Okay, yellow bulb. Okay, when you just see got yellow bulb, yellow bulb pass through one of the plate middle at the center. So that means you can see the shadow. Lah. Then shadow at the middle, then surrounded is a yellow color. They just like the light. Okay, yellow bulb light. So from here, you can see a shadow of the cross is seen. A yellow light is produced on the screen. So this one is what we can see. So from here, the explanation is light from the hot tungsten filament is blocked by the opaque object. There's a multi cross to form the shadow. So the light is travel straight line. Okay, sure, it's a straight line now because you focus the tube. There's a whole uh, multi cross already blocked. Okay, after that, see about the shape. Okay, now we continue to on uh, extra high tension. Uh. Okay, now the extra high tension is a 3 kilovolt. Okay, I go to heat. Okay, now you can see the electron already start to accelerate. Okay, when it just accelerate, that means they hit the fluorescent screen. Uh. Hit the fluorescent screen, they can produce the light ray. Now the light ray is a green color because this one surface, they got one of the chemical objects they call graphite. Okay, graphite, when it just hit, they produce a green light. Okay, so from here, we just see uh, this one is uh, what they can produce. Okay, the shadow still there. Okay, just now got one of the shadow. Now the shadow still at the middle. The shadow cannot move one. Okay, so from here you can see a dark shadow on the multi cross is surrounded by the green light. Okay, green light. So from here, cathode ray are blocked by the multi cross to form a shadow. Okay, cathode ray travel in straight line. Cathode ray also produce fluorescent effect on the screen surrounding the shadow. So from here, this show that the cathode ray process momentum and also kinetic energy. So that means now your electron already accelerate until anode. After that, they continue to move, then heat to the surface. After that, they produce a green light. Okay, if electron never move, go to the tube, you cannot see green light. They want only is yellow light. Okay, because the electron still not yet come out. Okay, after you put extra high tension, so that means the electron got enough energy that it can accelerate and hit to the screen and produce the green light. Okay, for this one situation, you see the green light means the EHT already on. Eh? Okay, so from here, the energy convert, <clears throat> kinetic, convert to the light energy. Okay, okay, this one is an example to show you. Or the cathode ray, when it just pass through the multi cross, okay, multi cross. After that, they produce a green light. So this one is an example. So cathode ray travel in straight line. Characteristic first one. Number two is cathode ray causes fluorescent, okay, fluorescent light. Cathode ray carry kinetic energy, which convert light energy when they are hit to the screen. So this one is a what we need to understand about the cathode ray. Okay, after deflector, we're going to see the another situation. We're using the magnet. Okay, we go using the magnet to uh, just put near to the tube. We see what happened for the cathode ray. Okay, now EHT and power supply also on. That means you got green light already. So I put the magnet beside the tube. Okay, you see what happened for the green color part. Okay, yellow color part is normal one. They're just like the normal bulb. Okay, green color part is a, after you on the EHT, then they got cathode ray. The green part is a cathode ray. So that means now they say they're using the magnet put at the side with the tube. So they find it. The green part, the cathode ray, they got movement. They will go to move. So the cathode ray shadow is deflected downwards. So this one is a one of the problem. 
how I know downwards or upwards? How I know they go to left or right? Ah, this one we need to use in Fleming left hand. Okay? Fleming left hand. Ah. Take out your left hand again. Ah. Okay, so from here we can see the explanations. One shadow is due to the light form, the hot tungsten filament, the yellow color. They still maintain at the middle because they want is from the tungsten filament. Okay, another shadow is due to the deflection of the cathode ray by the bar magnet that's a place near to the tube. When you put the magnet near to the tube, so you can find the another shadow. They want the green color, they got movement. So the deflection of the cathode ray can be determined by using Fleming left hand rule. Okay, so that means you need to know north to south. Then you need to know the current, how to flow. Then finally, you find the motion. Motion is how the cathode ray to move. Okay. So now we're going to see how to using the Fleming to determine the movement. Okay. This is an example. First one, they ask you name the rule we use to determine the direction. Sure, it's a Fleming left hand. Lah. Okay. Now you can see this one diagram. Okay. First one, magnetic field is moved. Upwards from the north to south. Okay, you can see this part. Lower part is a north. Upper part is a south. So now you point your left hand up. First finger is point up. Okay. Okay, first finger to point up. Okay, second one is the current. Okay, but now we don't have current. Is it? Cathode ray, we got current. Cathode ray already is an electron, is it? But the electron always opposite with the current. Okay, now the electron is come out, is it? If you stand surface of the tube, you see the electron is come out to you. But now you need to take out your second finger. You need to turn the second finger far away from you. Because the electron is come to you, so that means the, elect uh, the current must be opposite. That's a far away from you. So you go to turn. Okay? Uh, sorry, uh, electron is electron is come to you, so the current, yeah, current is far away from you. Okay, so from here you take out your thumb, point your thumb out. Now the thumb is go to right hand side, my right hand side. So you yours one also must be go to right hand side lah. So that means the answer is B. Okay, the answer they show is a B. B means go to the inside that side. Okay. So that means what, which part you need to stand? You just, you assume you stand in front of the tube. The whole tube just face to you. That means the electron to hit to your face. So that means you need to show by using the Fleming left hand. Important, the first one you show about the north to south. Okay, number two, you take out your second finger. Your second finger is a current, remember? Electron is always come to you. Okay, if you stand in front of the vacuum tube, means the electron is always come to you. So your current always point far away from you. Okay, so you take out your thumb. Now your thumb is point to right hand side. So that means now we got D and also the C, A, B, C, D here. So it, the, the direction almost near is go to the B. Okay, follow to move to the B. So that means your cathode ray, the shadow, they will deflect it, go to the B side. Okay. Left hand side. Okay, we go and see another one. Okay, this one north and south. Ah, north and south. You point like this. Okay, now the electron is come to you. Electron come to you means the current you need to balik. Okay, electron is you stand here lah. You assume you are stand here. Okay, you are stand in front of the tube. So north to south, then the electron come to you, current must be far away. So you can see your thumb is go downwards, go downwards. Okay, we go to show magnetic field from the north to the south. Okay, then the current is go in. Huh? Electron is come out, is it? So the current is opposite, they go inside. So finally, where's your force? Your force is go down. Okay, your force is go downwards. So that means later this one, the shadow, they will move downwards. Okay? So another situation like this. 
okay, exactly point to you already, the tube. So north to south, you go to point, north to south, okay? After that, now the current is uh, far away from you, correct? Far away, because electron is come to you. So finally, where's your thumb? Your thumb is point upwards. Your thumb is point upwards. North to south, current far away, okay? So after that, the thumb is point upwards. Okay, this one's north to south. Okay, then the current is far away from you. Then where is the force? Force is go upwards. So the answer should be C. Okay, so this one is how the shadow, when the cathode ray shadow to produce, where they go to move. We're using the Fleming left hand rule. Okay, so this one is a characteristic of the cathode ray. Yeah? Just now we explained about the first one, they go straight line. Okay, number two, we're using the deflection. Okay, they go to the positive plate. So that means there's an electron, there's a negative charge. After that, we're using the magnet. Okay, so conclusion here. First one, the cathode ray, they travel straight line in vacuum. Number two, the pro process of the kinetic energy and momentum because there's a high velocity to heat. Number three, there's a negative charge. Number four, deflected by the magnetic field and also electric field. Magnetic field means I put the magnet, they got, they got uh, effect. When I put the charge, they also got effect. Okay, number five, they produce the fluorescent effect. That's a kinetic energy convert to the light when it heat to the screen. Okay, so this one is an all characteristic for the cathode ray. Okay, we already proved. Okay. So from here, this one is the first part. Lah. First part for 5.1 about the electron. Okay, we not yet go through for the calculation. We still got calculations. Okay, today what you need to do, uh, Google form. Okay, fill in five of the question answer. Uh, today is no code. Okay, no code. You just type. After that, uh, you give the, uh, see the marks. Lah. Okay, if you got any question, that means you can PM me. So our lesson only until here. So thank you for your uh, attendance. Okay, for the student, you absent, uh, please uh, you go to repeat back. Uh, repeat back later, I share. Lah. Later, I share back about the video. Okay, everyone, just thank you for your attendance. Okay, go to key in your attendance. Okay, bye.